guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. I wanted to do a follow-up video on um, the video that I did regarding uh, a simple clinical test for vitamin D. Uh, and I'm going to split this video into two parts because um, some of it is quite technical. Uh, and I know there are some people out there uh, that will want to uh, know the basic information without a lot of the uh, technical uh, biochemical background. So I'm going to talk about um, a clinical test um, to uh, measure a, a more severe vitamin D deficiency. Uh, it's a simple clinical test that's used during physical examination. Um, and then the, sec the second part of the video, I will talk about some of the reasons why, uh, the biochemical reasons why this is um, uh, able to be done. So if you feel that you don't want that biochemistry, you can watch the first half of the video and you'll get most of the uh, relevant uh, real world information uh, about the actual test. Um, so there is, an, there is a clinical, uh, if you, uh, firstly I'll talk about my, my, just briefly about my other video. My other video was a, uh, a simple clinical test. I'll bring that link up uh, so that you can go and see that video if you haven't. It was a simple clinical test uh, based on a questionnaire. Uh, and that questionnaire asked a number of questions uh, and the, the answers to those questions provided a score. You added up the score and that would give you uh, an overall risk of having a vitamin D insufficiency. So not a deficiency, but an insufficiency. So that's a low level of vitamin D, um, but not to the level where uh, you would have severe clinical sim uh, symptoms. Uh, it would be more of a, a, a chronic damaging effect from that uh, from that kind of insufficient vitamin D state. Uh, and that there was a study that was done uh, on the on that clinical um, uh, questionnaire, and it, it correlated very very closely with with actual blood values uh, that were taken from the subjects. So this um, these researchers did actually um, uh, they did assess the, the the reliability and the accuracy of their of their test. So that video uh, is worth watching if you want to 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 have a look at it. And I wanted to do this one as a follow up just to talk about another type of clinical test that can be done to measure an actual vitamin D deficiency, a more a more severe uh, clinical deficiency that would actually cause uh, more more short term effects, uh, and they would be much more serious as well. Um, and this test is really basically just a pressure test. Uh, there is a device called an algometer which you can use for this and doctors would use that and it measures the amount of pressure uh, that you can apply to a particular part of the body uh, but you can actually just use your thumb um, uh, you apply light pressure to certain parts of exposed bone uh, and if you feel pain um, there is um, a, a, you know a clinical uh, reason why uh, that pain can be uh, a, a caused uh, caused by um, a vitamin D deficiency so uh, how do you do this? Well, really, you just use your thumb and you need to press on some parts of exposed bone. Uh, you can't press through muscle onto the bone. So you have to find those parts uh, of the skeleton that are actually um, really just covered by a layer of skin so you can get directly to them. Uh, the ones that are usually used are the bottom of the sternum, which is uh, around about here. You can feel your breastbone goes down between your uh, between your uh, down your chest and you can feel the bottom of your sternum. Uh, and it's usually in most people uh, exposed and you can apply light pressure to there uh, and the, if you feel pain uh, quite severe pain uh, with light pressure that's uh, indicative of uh, a vitamin d deficiency because it means that you possibly have osteomalacia um, which is the uh, the adult um, vitamin d deficient disease uh, in children uh, the disease would be uh, be called rickets um, the, another area that you can uh, find exposed bone that is used clinically uh, is in your wrist and on your wrist you have the, uh, the styloid process of the radius which is on your thumb side and you have the styloid process of the ulna which is on your little finger side and you, those are two you know but those pieces of bone are exposed in, in, in you know in all people and they can be used as well and if you feel them there you know they are quite tender if you apply a lot of pressure to them but it's them it's the light pressure that will indicate that you possibly have a vitamin D uh, deficiency uh, and the last place that's uh, that's used quite often is the anterior part of the tibia which is uh, what's colloquially called the shin uh, and that's another part obviously of your lower leg uh, you can fit most people can feel their shin bone it's that piece of bone that you quite often hit and it really hurts when you you hit it on something accidentally 
uh, and that's another piece of, uh, of bone that's quite that's exposed and is used clinically uh, at, uh, with an algometer or with a with a, a light pressure from the thumb in order to determine if you have a, a vitamin D deficiency and if obviously you know this is not uh, something that um, you know you know is 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 definitive really a blood test is still one of those things that you have to get done if you want to confirm that you have low levels of 2,5-hydroxy vitamin D which is the active metabolite of vitamin D in, in the body a blood test is really needed to confirm that but this is just another I thought it would, I would thought I thought I would throw this out there for information purposes this is a clinically used test um, it's quite interesting because Vitamin D deficiency causes bone pain, and I'll talk about why that is in the second half of the video, but it also causes muscle pain. Uh, and there is evidence in the scientific literature, if you look at people that um, uh, investigate uh, vitamin D and talk about the uh, the clinical relevance, usually doctors that work in, um, in, in clinics that have um, you know, exposure to this, uh, there is a, a, a there is a known um, false diagnosis for vitamin D deficiency, and quite often people have muscle pain, uh, bone pain, and they're diagnosed as having something like fibromyalgia, uh, and really they have a vitamin D deficiency. So, uh, you know, without a blood test, it is even doctors get this wrong. But this is just another way; uh, it's another uh, another test that you can use to assess whether you uh, you know whether you are deficient in vitamin D if you compress those bones and you don't really feel you don't feel pain and I, I don't mean very high amounts of pressure and this is why an algometer is used because it allows you to actually um, standardize the amount of pressure that is applied and, and actually take a measurement applying pressure with your thumb is, is a little bit subjective but if you comply a re, uh, you can apply a reasonable amount of pressure and you don't feel pain in those in those areas the chances are you don't have osteomalacia and therefore the chances are you don't have a severe vitamin d deficiency if you do feel pain obviously you really need to go and see your doctor uh, and get a vitamin d uh, blood test to see if you have uh, at low levels of vitamin d you can use this uh, in conjunction obviously with my other video uh, which was um, to determine whether you had a you know a less severe vitamin D insufficiency, uh, and they, they you know they're quite useful um, for information purposes only uh, for those people that are interested uh, in vitamin D. So that's the there's the actual test. What about the biochemistry? Uh, this is the bit you can turn off if you're not interested uh, in the in the background nutrition and biochemistry uh, reasons for uh, why your bone starts to hurt uh, when you have a vitamin D deficiency. Um, Vitamin D is a hormone. It, it works with other hormones in the body to, reg, to regulate calcium and also phosphate levels. And two of the hormones it works with are parathyroid hormone and calcitonin. Um, and calcitonin has a, an antagonistic effect to parathyroid hormone. hormone. Uh, calcitonin tends to lower calcium and phosphate levels in the blood. Uh, and it does this by decreasing absorption from the gut and increasing the excretion of the calcium from the kidney. Parathyroid hormone tends to do exactly the opposite. Uh, parathyroid hormone tends to increase calcium and phosphate uh, it, uh, uptake from the gut and decrease their excretion from uh, from the kidney and therefore it raises plasma levels of phosphate uh, and calcium. Now if you have low levels of calcium in your diet um, you you will activate um, parathyroid hormone, and parathyroid hormone will then try to increase your um, your calcium levels in your blood. Because if you have less in your diet, it stands to reason that there will obviously be less in your blood. And the parathyroid hormone does does this tries to raise calcium um, in the blood by um, synthesizing 2,5-hydroxy vitamin D into 1,2,5-dihydroxy vitamin D, which is just a metabolite, uh, another metabolite of vitamin D. And this metabolite then stimulates transporters uh, in the gut to increase calcium absorption, and it also decreases the uh, excretion of calcium in the kidney uh, by again stimulating the, uh, the the synthesis and the activity of transporters which reabsorb the calcium from um, uh, from from when it's where it's filtered in the kidney um, which therefore means less of it gets into the urine and that is an effective way of of increasing the calcium and the phosphate levels of of blood uh, and this system works you know it works within a very very narrow window as long as there's enough vitamin d because it's the it's the vitamin d that was required to form this metabolite that parathyroid hormone uses to raise plasma levels of calcium uh, and phosphate if there's a vitamin d deficiency uh, and calcium levels in the in the diet are low um, 
this 1,2,5-dihydroxyvitamin D is unable to obviously uh, be produced and therefore parathyroid hormone is not able to, to increase calcium levels of phosphate uh, of calcium and phosphate uh, and this causes plasma levels to fall now the body has to maintain uh, plasma levels blood levels of calcium and phosphate within narrow uh, narrow range and this is because calcium is is required for physiological function it's required for uh, nerve cell uh, activity it's required for the uh, for the for the um, uh, for the correct um, contraction of your heart muscle um, so calcium is in the blood is very important and if it starts to uh, drop below a certain level the body is obviously aware of this and it, it, it does everything it can to try and boost uh, calcium levels uh, in, in the blood uh, and if it doesn't have calcium in the diet uh, and it can't absorb the calcium because there's no vitamin D it goes to the next store of calcium which it doesn't really want to attack it doesn't really want to use this calcium but it will do if it has to and this calcium is the calcium that is in bone uh, and what happens is the calcium in bone starts to be leached uh, and that calcium is used as a surrogate source of calcium to keep the um, to keep the calcium levels in um, your blood at their right range and that obviously can lead to osteopenia uh, and as that gets more severe it leads to osteoporosis so this is the link between vitamin D calcium and osteoporosis uh, it's a, a source of calcium that is required by uh, by the by the body uh, in the blood and it uses the bone if it can't get it from somewhere else and gradually your bones deteriorate as you use up that calcium to um, uh, you know to supply calcium to your to your blood um, as calcium levels and phosphate levels uh, drop in the blood uh, in the blood uh, the levels of calcium phosphate fall and calcium phosphate is required for the formation of new bone tissue so not only do we have a breakdown of bone tissue because we've got a lack of calcium we also have um, a, a, an inability to make new bone tissue um, now this is this is a, a related disease but it's not the same and this is how osteomalacia forms um, osteoblasts will still create uh, the matrix uh, which is the uh, collagen um, supportive tissue that is required uh, for bone uh, if you have a calcium and a vitamin D deficiency they will still produce the matrix uh, and they, 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 they put this matrix into the, uh, the periosteum of the bone which is the outer layer and what normally happens is that matrix is then uh, added to that matrix is calcium phosphate uh, and it hardens, the, it hardens the layer to create what we know as bone if we don't have enough calcium phosphate and we've got this problem with the amount of calcium in our in our in our blood um, the matrix will still form the collagen will be laid down but it won't be calcified there won't be enough calcium phosphate to calcify that matrix so it will remain soft uh, and if it doesn't harden what it tends to do is it absorbs water it hydrates uh, and that causes it to swell and when this matrix swells it produces pressure on the outer coat of the bone which is called the periosteum and this is why uh, clinically uh, you get pain in your bones when you have a, a vitamin D and a calcium deficiency uh, and this is why a vitamin D deficiency ultimately leads to bone pain and this disease where you have uh, an inability to uh, to calcify the bone matrix that is being laid down is called osteomalacia and that's the technical reason why um, these clinical tests are useful because obviously if you have this um, this uncalcified matrix that's absorbed um, water it's been hydrated it's producing pressure on the outer part of the bone the periosteum uh, if you then push your finger your thumb onto that bone and you press down uh, it, it causes uh, the generation of pain and this is why these clinical tests are actually quite useful uh, they're very you know they possibly not so much now but certainly when um, you know vitamin D deficiency was quite common they were they were they were you know they were they were tests that were done by doctors to see if the you know if rickets was present in um, children and rickets is really just the, the, the childhood version of osteomalacia osteomalacia is the um, is the adult version and there are slight differences because obviously if you get a softening of the bone in children when they're growing uh, you actually get deformation of the bones uh, in adults it's not quite you know not I'm not saying it's not serious but it's not as serious as that because our bones have already grown so we get a softening of the bone but because they're not growing we don't get this um, this de de deformity uh, and you tend to see um, clinical signs like bowed legs uh, and you see deformation of the of the skeleton in children when they get rickets so they're slightly different diseases but they're caused by really the same effect which is a vitamin D 
deficiency. Um, so that's the biochemical reason why the, that, that test is, is useful and it's, it's used and I thought I would just throw that out there for those people that are interested and if you've stayed with me throughout this video uh, hopefully you've learned something interesting and you know maybe that test one day or the knowledge surrounding it will be will be useful to you. Um, if you want some more information on you know vitamin D deficiency and all the all, all the nutrition of vitamin D and calcium uh, please visit my blog which is robertbarrington.net um, and I hope this video is interesting. So as always, eat well, stay healthy and protect yourself. And I'll see you soon for another video. Take care.